like I never left. All right, so we have box one. We have the main leg assembly here. All right, let's get this framework out. Also highly recommend wearing steel toe boots doing this. I am not because this was a spur of the moment thing and I just, I want it to be in the garage right now. All right, so yeah, we're gonna have to break open the second box right now. By the way, I'm also really sorry if you hear that sound in the back, that is my air conditioner. It is currently a little warm, so I had to turn it on so I didn't overheat. Alright, so this is what you are going to need for the wheel assembly. So for the back, you're going to use the 5 8 M8 bolts. You're going to take four of your nuts and two lock washers. Now how they want you to do it is you are going to take these bolts, go right on through here. You are going to take your lock nut, apply it on. And then you are going to take your nut and then just put it right over that. Let's get these done. Alright, now for the top, you are going to be using the 5 8 M8 bolts that are going to go right into here with the wheels like so. Just like that. Alright, let's get these done now. All right, we got the main base done. Now let's get these legs on there. All right, so this is gonna be the same as the wheel in the back. These are the heavy duty ones with the half inch M8 lock washer and a nut. Let's do these now. All right, second one done, the base is built. These go on like so. And then you just take the big pins and simply slide, slide and lock. Yes, this also feels very good to be sitting right now. My back is a little bit screaming from working at the angle that I was. Woo! Okay. Now that was a little bit of an issue. Yeah. That does look more right. So these bolts down here are your M19s, by the way. There's two of them, comes with a washer and two nuts. Those go on. All right, for the most part, that actually was not too, too bad. Uh, one thing is one of the sizes for the supports right here are not correct. These don't line up hardly even close. Uh, so that's one thing. 
Uh, but other than that, actually not too bad. The only way I could combat that would be to... That's really interesting. No way. Really, the final touch, you're gonna do that to me. The real final touch. That's really something incredible, isn't that? Okay, so that wasn't too bad. Let's just go over some things. Number one, these were not even close of fitting into here. You can already see. See how this one's a little bit bigger than the other one? I mean, it wasn't even, they, they just didn't work. So still bang for buck. I haven't pulled a motor yet. Uh, I would hope that this thing is as reliable as they claim it is. Otherwise, that's gonna really stink. Uh, but the other thing is now this up here, the chain, like so. It's supposed to just go right through here and then you put a bolt right in through this hole that holds that on. The bolt that is left being this, that just, it doesn't fit. So I'm gonna have to oblong this out, meaning I have to make that hole a hair bigger to fit that, which is not what I really wanted to do. Uh, but again, it's all in the name of love of the passion and or not spending $600 on a, on a crane or hoist. But that pretty much wraps that up. That's a very simple fix that I'm not gonna do right now because I'm absolutely shot. As you can tell, it was sunny out before it is now dark out. Uh, so all in all, that was about an hour and a half. And the majority of that hour and a half was just figuring out why certain things weren't lining up because I thought it was my fault, but it wasn't just the way they made it. All right, so I wanna give you guys a little quick demonstration. how simple this thing is to use now. It's a little heavy with a garage floor that is all or all sorts of out of whack. All right, so we have the main piece up, right? It is as simple as remove pin one, pin two, don't hit, hit the car. I'm actually not gonna put these pins in because the floor is so out of whack that it would be almost impossible for me to get it undone again. Don't hit the bumper either. One. And two. And as simple as that. And then when it comes time to actually doing the hoist, you grab the pole that comes right on the side. Watch that thing in here and do 2,000 pumps. All right, it was as simple as that. Now this right here, now I can show you what I had to do. So this, I just needed to oblong a little bit right inside here. Inside here, obviously I drilled it from the outside, but this is now, sorry, that was, that was probably excessively loud, but this is now what holds on with the chain. Nice and simple little process. And now to undo it all, I'm gonna take this like so. And what we're gonna do is this right here comes back out like this and just take it and loosen the bolt. like that. These go right back in, or that goes right back in. These here go up. A little heavy, but you know, name of the game. Lock that in. Let that sit. Up. Let that sit. Look at that. All done. And then once you're done using it, you can just take it and wheel it right back. Right back to where you want it. It is as simple as that. So I hope you guys enjoyed the build on the crane hoist from Pittsburgh Automotive. AKA bought from Harbor Freight, $250.
Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys in the next one. Hmm. Now that. That's a curveball.